Hi, I'm Dr. Herb Raymond Schneider. I'm going to share with you some information that we uh, like to have our patients know, and I'm sure you will want to know. And it's focused on that real problem of prostate cancer. Now we're going to venture into a little more controversial area, but one that I think we'll all see will become mainstream very soon, and that's focal cryoablation. Focal cryoablation is rapidly evolving. Many centers that are already involved with cryosurgery, particularly focused on the prostate, are now looking at the focal treatment of cryoablation. Focal subtotal prostate cryoablation was presented at the Prostate Cancer Conference or the Prostate Cancer Research Institute uh, early this month, September of 2008. Uh, Dr. Duke Bond uh, presented some very interesting information related to cryoablation. I'm going to share that information from these folks with you. Now, we've all heard the PSA is controversial. Do we overdiagnose prostate cancer? Maybe. But like any cancer, early diagnosis gives you options that late diagnosis does not. Let's look at this for a moment. What we really want to know is, can we treat prostate cancer as a focal occurrence. Now this has some similarities in history. I think we can all remember that when women had breast cancer for many years, all we heard about was the radical mastectomy. Today, it's lumpectomy. Let's see how that fits in prostate disease. In this study, <clears throat> done in June of 2007, about 1,200 radical prostatectomies were analyzed by pathologic assessment. And what was found is that about 20% were focal or localized disease within the prostate. Well, it's not a huge number, but it's a start. Now, <clears throat> if that's the case, and if we can diagnose these patients, and we treat only that portion of the prostate, then clearly we can have the potential to eliminate cancer and not create problems with side effects such as uh, disrupting the ability to have erections and intercourse and at probably the worst, uh, problems with urinary control. Other 80% of patients uh, in many circumstances, one lesion was dominant. In other words, about a cubic centimeter of prostate cancer cells, or maybe a little less. And the rest of the cancers that made these tumors that were not focal uh, involve more of the prostate were very small lesions. They were less than a half a cc, or in many instances, even three-tenths of a cc. Why is that important? Well, there, there is clearly a theory of insignificant prostate cancer, meaning that the larger the tumor, the more potential it has to create disease and do bad things to us. And the very small deposits of cancer if they do fall into the insignificant category, it means it's the same thing as the prostate cancers that are found in men who, for instance, die of other causes, have prostate examinations by the pathologist, and they're found to have very small uh, areas of prostate cancer, but it didn't seem to do anything to them. However, what we did find in looking at the rest of the patients who had prostate cancer was that there was a larger lesion that really made up the bulk of the cancer in this prostate gland, and that's known as the index lesion. 
the rest of the cancer within that prostate was very small volume. Could this be insignificant prostate cancer? Well, when these cancers were carefully studied, it was determined that of those patients who had disease outside the prostate, it was the belief of these researchers that 90% of those patients' cancers originated from the index or the big lesion, which in many instances involved only one area of the prostate. That if the index lesion was destroyed, potentially we could eliminate 90% of the extracapsular extension of prostate cancer, which can be considered curative if our assumption of insignificant cancer is accurate to assess this. One is what's called a saturation biopsy. A saturation biopsy involves doing numerous biopsies with a grid pattern that uh, encompasses the prostate in such a manner that we have good understanding of what's actually going in to the information allowing us to make the diagnosis of prostate cancer, and in this case, focal prostate cancer. What is it that those folks who would choose less than full treatment want? Well, they want a quality of life, and they want no compromise in the cure rate. Can that be delivered? Well, once again, we're back to active surveillance or radical treatment? Or is there a compromise? Could we treat the focus that we believe to be the problem in prostate cancer, the index tumor? There are clearly are many people, including myself, who think this is a realistic consideration. So what is it that we're trying to find then? We want to see that we can identify a focus of cancer, in this case, hopefully in just one area of the prostate, maybe a dominant lesion or the index lesion. We'd like to think that the grade of the tumor is low, meaning its activity level would be less aggressive. Well, as we look at this group of patients, what we're really focusing is on stage. What that means is how much cancer is, does this person have, how much is there, and where is it? And if we believe it to be focal, then I think we have a new strategy that can help us solve this problem. Well, we have lots of ways we can categorize these tumors once we know where they are, and we have information that tells us about them. So, we look for uh, at least a number of biopsy specimens, probably 12, maybe more, that meet those characteristics. And if we decided it was focal and it was unilateral, we would freeze that side of the prostate. We'd freeze it aggressively. We'd look at the nerves as well as the seminal vesicles if necessary. And then we'd follow the patients carefully with uh, PSAs every three months for a year, biopsies at six month intervals, and uh, PSA assays at six month intervals, probably for the length of this patient's follow-up. What have we got? We have a situation where we're able to preserve the gland and its function and yet destroy the cancer within. And follow-up indicates, at least in these series, that it's a valid consideration. So, <clears throat> are there major complications? No. Uh, do we have problems with urinary incontinence in this group? No. The potency is actually comparable to the best potency sparing or potency preserving procedures available. 
such as nerve spraying radical prostatectomy, radiation. It's actually better. And the PSA is stable uh, in a very high percentage to date.